the first colonists in the 17th century saw the unexplored land as a blank slate on which they could write their designs and find their chance to create utopia. And their visions of what such a place might mean have left indelible traces on the identity of modern America. The wilderness was untamed, they were right about that, but it was not no man's land. To about 12 million American Indians, it was home. And the first big cultural collision between colonist and native took place here in the desert tablelands of the Southwest. Charged with the hunger for conquest, just 50 years after Columbus, the Spaniards marched north to what would be known as New Mexico. The Spaniards thought they would find infinite gold as Cortes and his conquistadores had in old Mexico. They hoped that paradise was here for the taking. They'd heard talk of golden cities, the seven cities of Cibola, but instead they found tribal Indians living in multi-story villages, the Pueblo Indians. They had pottery, but not gold. The Spanish never did find gold. But on their wild goose chase after non-existent treasure, they at last arrived at the foot of Sky City, the ancient city of Arkema. One bemused Spaniard called it the greatest stronghold ever seen in the world. With its 2,000 dwellings, this is the oldest continuously populated city in North America. The Arkemas had lived here for a thousand years before the Spanish arrived. For them, it was a sacred place, but not for the invaders. In 1599, the Spanish massacred most of the Arkhamas and sold the rest into slavery. Yet the Arkhamas built up their community again, and their descendants were persuaded by the Franciscan missionaries to build an immense shrine on the rock to their god, the Catholic god. The Church of San Esteban was finished by the 1720s. By then, it was by far the largest mission church in all of New Mexico, with its immense cyclopean walls, 10 feet thick at the base, and its 150-foot-long nave, all of it entailing something like 20,000 tons of rock and clay, every ounce of which had to be brought up from the valley floor below on people's backs because there wasn't any loose fill on top of the mesa. Indian labor, Spanish techniques. The basic unit of San Esteban is the mud brick, the adobe, a simple technology which the Spaniards had brought with them from the old world. Because the adobe is only dried mud, the rain melts it and it is in constant need of repair. The repeated coats of mud produce singular organic forms that are the signature of the adobe style, as in this church at Ranchos de Taos. Seventy years ago, these fluid shapes would inspire the work of modernist artists like Georgia O'Keeffe. The pure and primal character of the southwestern desert would draw her and other artists from New York looking for the primitive, as Gauguin was drawn to Tahiti. In the magnificent fierce morning of New Mexico, wrote D.H. Lawrence, the old world gave way to the new. So bring that adobe brick on wheels over to squeaky clean car... Modern New Mexico fetishizes its cultural past. Founded in 1610, Santa Fe is the oldest European city in North America. But here, the adobe style isn't just pervasive, it's mandatory. The law says you can't build a chain store or a gas station unless it's in the manner of a 17th century mission church. This goes hand in hand with the artiness of the place, stuffed with every kind of pious ethno-kitsch displaying its multi-culti credentials.
To see earlier examples of artistic fusion on the southwestern frontier, it's better to go to places like the Church of San Jose in Laguna Pueblo. It was built around 1700 and its friars embraced Pueblo art. Pueblo art. Indian designs along the walls lead to the florid altar screen with the sun, the firmament and the moon on top painted in the Indian way and the Blessed Trinity in Spanish style below them. On the right is St. Barbara who protected you from thunder and gunshot wounds, a useful saint for Indians to have. In this fusion between European and Native American traditions, a rich aesthetic rises from cultural collision. And this would be very much part of the story of the arts in a nation made of immigrants. The priests secured the frontier. Then came Spanish settlers. They built their big, self-contained farmhouses or haciendas like fortresses to withstand attacks from hostile Indians. Made of adobe, most of these have perished, and this is one of the few that remain, Casa San Isidro. The early Spanish colonists led isolated and harsh lives in a culture of survival propped up by faith. Today, this is the home of Ward Allen Min. What was this room? Uh, this happens to be a chapel. I suppose it seems strange to, to us nowadays, but in the old uh, Spanish homes, uh, especially if it were large enough with a large family, they often had their own chapels such as this. Uh, it's very plain, actually, by those that you might find in Mexico or Spain, but it reflects, I think, the hard life uh, that the settlers had here in New Mexico. When the colonists, including the missionaries were here, they were pretty much on their own, weren't they? That's true, and uh, the isolation is what uh, many of us feel has resulted in a rather unique cultural expression that we find in this area. The Franciscans encouraged images that were simple and direct, crudely carved, highly colored, full of sacrifice and death. You needed the impact to drive home religious doctrine. It reaches an extreme in a type of statue made by penitential cults in New Mexico known as Doña Sebastiana, death riding in a cart. This skull-headed crone wielding her bow and arrow is Eros reversed. These death carts are among the most powerful and unnerving sculptures produced in North America. The Spanish settlers brought to the New World the culture of the old. But there was a more radical idea to come. Americans as a new people for whom God had marked out a special role in human history. This came with another group, English Puritans, who landed on the cold coast of Massachusetts in the 17th century. <laughs> 